Well, you guys got another video here for you on how to install Android OS on a VMware workstation. Now, VMware workstation is a virtual machine software which you can install operating systems on. So let's open up a VMware workstation here and we're going to install Android here. I'm using workstation 15.5 Pro. So right click on the left hand side and create a new virtual machine. We're going to do custom here, which is for advanced uh, users, but that's what we need to do to install it on our system. But normally it's set to typical. So we're going to go to custom, go next. Now you can see here it's selecting the hardware compatibility. So we're going to go next here. Now we can install the uh, operating system later on, and that's what we're going to choose to do. So go next. Next, we need to choose the operating system here so what we're going to do is go to other and then we're going to select our operating system so let's go other and what we want to do here is go to FreeBSD version 10 and earlier and 64-bit that's the version we're going to select here for our Android operating system go next and uh, you can rename it at this stage if you wish to call it something more memorable it's entirely up to you I'm just going to put Android in there but you can give it the full name of Phoenix OS if you wish choose your location where you want your virtual machine to be stored and if you're on a small drive here you might want to put this onto a second uh, sort of hard drive so we're going to go next okay so now we need to set our processors I'm going to put this to number two so two processors and I'm going to do number of cores two but I've got plenty in reserve, so depends on what type of chip you're using. If you're using a small processor, then you might want to keep this on low, uh, but I'm going to be putting this two and two. Next, we need to choose our memory for our virtual machine, and uh, I'm going to go up to around about five or six gigs, something like that, but I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM inside here, so I can use quite a bit, uh, but if you've got a very limited amount of RAM, you want to keep this low, okay? So I'm going to go to around about five or six, something like that, and then go next. You can see here, this is the amount we're using. So just push on the next button here. Now for our network type, I'm gonna use a NAT, and I'm gonna leave that as is, go next. And we can leave LSI logic recommended here for now. So we're just gonna leave that as is. And next we can do, uh, you can see here, SCIS or we've got IDE, I'm just gonna go IDE for this particular type of install. Go next here, and uh, we can now create our new virtual disk here. So go next. Now you can give it the maximum disk size that you want to use, so I'm just gonna say something like 60 here, but if you've got a smaller drive, you might wanna do something smaller. You don't need vast amounts for Android to run, so it's entirely up to you going to store this virtual disk as a single file and I'm going to go next here. Now you can uh, give the disk file name whatever you like here. I'm just going to leave that as is and I'm just going to go next. Okay so that's part done so let's go to customize hardware now and we're going to take a look inside here. Now inside here you should see all of the changes that we've made for our virtual machine. As you can see here memory, our processors and we also got uh, our CD here, we can choose our ISO image for our uh, installation. We've also got a network which we set up here. You can change all this at a later date if you wish. You can go into the settings and make changes. We've got USB controller, display on um, Accelerate 3D graphics here. And you can change the graphics memory. It's at 256 megabytes down below there. I shall leave that as is for now, but you can up that to something higher if you wish but you can put that up to whatever you uh, can uh, run on your system. Okay, so that's now all done. What we can do here is go up to the top here and we can make changes as well up the top here. So if you wanna to go to VM and settings, you can go inside here and you'll now see there's some settings inside here which we can also adapt and change to our liking a later date if you want to. Go to options here and then what we want to do is go all the way down to the bottom where it says advanced here and this bit's important I'm going to leave this on BIOS if it's on UEFI you may run into trouble trying to get this to install you want to make sure that you've got um, uh, it on BIOS setting if it's on UEFI and you've got enable secure boot it's not going to work okay so just take that out okay so now we've got that all done we can now click closed and we can now go to our 
CD-ROM drive here and we're going to choose our ISO image. So let's go use ISO image file, go browse and then choose your operating system which is your Android operating system of your choice. In this case I'm going to go for Phoenix OS installer because that's what people wanted to see. So we're going to select that ISO image and we're going to click OK. And once we've got that done we're ready to power on the virtual machine for the first time and it should then start to load up. There we go. We've now got it to load up to the installation part. We're going to click installation or install Phoenix OS to the hard disk. Once we've got that done, we can now move on to this stage, which is what you've seen before, which is now to create and modify partitions. We need to create a partition for our installation. So I'm going to move this down to create and modify partitions and click OK. Once we've got that done, we move on to the next screen. Do we want uh, to use GPT? No, we don't. So we're going to click no here. So just click no. And now we need to create a partition. So I'm going to click new and then primary. So select primary and then we can choose the size that we want to use. So in this case, I'm going to do 200 megabytes. And we're going to move on to the next bit, which is choose the beginning, end or cancel. We're going to choose beginning here and we're going to make that bootable. So we need to click on bootable here and you should see the flags area suddenly be populated with a bootable uh, tab there. There we go. So next up, we're going to come down to the free space and then we're going to go to new and create a new primary partition on there as well. So click new primary and we can use the rest of the space that we've uh, set out here. OK, so we've got that all done. So what we're going to do next is use your cursor key arrows on the keyboard and move this down to the next area where we need to do right. So we're on the SDA one boot primary, which is our 200 meg uh, partition and click right on there and right to that partition. So hit right and then type yes. And that's what we need to do next. So just type in yes here and uh, we should be good to go. There we go, it's right in the partition table to that disk. So we'll just let that finish off. Okay, so now we've done that, we can uh, come out of here now. So we just use your cursor key arrows and go to quit here and quit out. Okay, so you can now see our SDA1 and SDA2. We need to be on SDA2 at this stage and we're gonna click OK here. Once we click OK, this is our uh, secondary primary uh, partition we're going to choose ext4 and it will say do you want to format that yes we do so click yes here so we're going to push yes and this will get everything ready do you want to install F efi grub2 yes i do and that's now move on to sda1 and we can now click ok do you want to format that partition yes we do do we want to install the bootloader grub yes we do and uh, we're going to move on to the next stage once that's written that information to that partition. If you find this a little bit too fast, you can always pause uh, the video and see what uh, I'm selecting there. So we'll just let that finish off installing. And we're nearly there now. We should have our operating system up and running. So it's synchronizing the disks. We can now reboot our system by using the cursor keys to move down to reboot. And you should now see Phoenix OS right there. Click OK and we can now start to load up. Now, if you're using a Phoenix OS, you will see this system initializing. Uh, please wait. Just basically give it a bit of time and it does finally initialize. If you're using a different version of Android, you may see a different splash screen here. Uh, but just be patient and move on to your next step. You should be ready to install and set up your account. So we'll just let this initialize and then we should move on to this stage. Once you get here, you're pretty much good to go for Phoenix OS. We can now select English United States, click next, and we can move on to that next bit, which is the user license agreement. Accept that. You will now see connect via LAN. If you're on a Wi-Fi, I'll talk about that in a second. We can now create an account and we should be up and running. Now, some people have had issues with Wi-Fi with uh, their laptop when they've basically installed it on a laptop. And the reason for that is drivers 
uh, for the particular operating system and that can be a problem now there is ways around it you can uh, do some sort of fix where you can enable Wi-Fi you can see it won't allow me to enable this and you can get around this by upgrading the file inside of the operating system and uh, basically getting the Wi-Fi to work another way around it is getting a, a compatible dongle that does work with this version of Android and plugging it into your computer and you will be then able to get Wi-Fi working it's very simple uh, but again some people said you can't get it working and it's a waste of time you can get around it if you want to see that video let me know in the comments section below and I'll make that video for you other than that you can use your virtual machine here with Android on it with uh, your Ethernet connection plugged in you should be able to get uh, internet here if you want to play games like PUBG and games like that you will have to log into the Google Play Store and download those games you might want to set your graphics uh, memory a little bit higher if you're playing games on here and you should be good to go other than that I think that's going to be about it for this video my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope this video has been some use to you I shall see you again for another video tomorrow thanks again for watching have a great day bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.